Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's DNA webinar, Unlocking Ad Success with Proper Optics. Joined here by David Barbara, Danny Shapori on our sales team. These are the folks that are speaking to hundreds of issuers a month that are brands issuing shares on an equity crowdfunding platform or another digital marketing funnel to bring in investors. We're going to talk about the questions that we get asked on a daily basis, the success that we see across our campaigns, the failure that occurs commonly across these types of initiatives industry-wide. Going to get into the actual details with you here today. David, new addition to the team here in 2023, rocking in terms of the impact you're having with brands and even taking a consult consultative role in your discussions. Let's, let's start off with your background and why this matters today, where it's all coming from as we pull up the deck and get into the details. Yeah, you know, I've been part of the ecosystem of interactive marketing since the late 90s. So I've seen the, the evolution of where it first started and where it is today and where it's continually to, going to grow. Um, the emerging technologies that have, have allowed us to understand the clients a little bit better, to understand what's out there and who's looking for us and looking for that specific product or offering gives us a added leverage uh, when it comes to definitely providing them information and then going to a raise page, for example, in order for them to invest. Um, I, I, this is a fascinating area that um, I've never thought I'd find myself in. <laughs> but um, since 2021, where they actually extended the Reg CF from 1 million to 5 million has allowed us to really show what we can do from, from a perspective of marketing, sort of perspective of how we can actually address the positiveness of these different companies, whether it be a startup or an eight year startup. Uh, it's just, just, it's just never ending right now. And I think we're in the, just the, the infancy of where this is going. It very much is the infancy and the needs growing on a daily basis. That's why we focus on it. Danny Shapori has worked on hundreds of campaigns with us. Danny, why does today's topic matter? Why should viewers take extra note? It's a common question that we get, and we speak with issuers at all different stages. Um, one's in the plateaued phase, one's in the planning phase, one's in the scaling phase. And the common theme is if they're plateaued is, oh, you know, I wish I heard these insights beforehand. It can set up my uh, race to a different level. I wish I had a better idea what I was getting into. And I, I'm not a fan of saying, hey, let's relaunch your raise. Um, so these insights could be a, a dimensional income to them being successful. And uh, the sooner they hear this information, the better. And uh, they can make pivots with live campaigns with this information as well. You guys may recognize Danny from past webinars, LinkedIn outreach, other types of biz dev topics. But as mentioned, Danny's worked on hundreds of campaigns here, has seen it all. Uh, so wanted to emphasize that. Started with an SEO background before getting into full stack advertising outreach content marketing that we do here. Uh, this is our deck, Unlocking Ad Success with Proper Optics. Uh, we will have this on the video, which will be sent over uh, as a link afterwards. Uh, we often get asked for the deck as well, too. You're welcome to, to reach out around that, have our smiling profiles here, uh, all dressed up at our last in-person summit here in June with the whole team. Uh, and the, the equity crowdfunding industry breakdown is where we wanted to begin. Here at DNA, we do investor and user acquisition campaigns, equity crowdfunding, regulated raises, uh, Reg CF with regulation crowdfunding, Reg A plus um, allows for both retail and accredited up to 75 million, and then Reg D accredited investor only rounds. That, that, that's where most of the capital raising takes place that we're able to participate in with digital marketing. And here is the one metric you really need to absorb to have this conversation. Uh, Danny, how do so many issuers miss this point? And what are we seeing in the space today? I know we're gonna get into exact metrics, but, but why is it important to set your campaign up for success with the optics? And what are we currently seeing in the space? 
Yeah, so a lot of these points cover a few different strategy points that we want to focus on. So if we're having a two to three month campaign, which some uh, some portals have those guidelines around, we need to really come up with a strong launch. If you're looking to raise a million seventy, five million, what have you, um, the, the stats are against you unless you have that strong launch on those portals. Some have uh, portals where you can, uh, live offerings where you can launch your campaign. If you're hitting benchmarks, you can go up to a year. I think that's a big factor of it. Uh, but having realistic expectations, I mean, a lot of variables go into that 90% and a lot of them I find um, kind of just jump into their raise. And then when it's not working, um, it's a lot harder to pull a campaign out that doesn't have a strong launch. So the 90%, I feel if they had strong launches, it would be a, a higher number. Um, but uh, it's tough times right now and we need to show what makes your offering unique. Uh, and show business momentum and raise momentum ongoing. And we get asked, hey, can I raise $5 million in two months, in three months? Yes, if, if the optics are there. Yes, if you're doing proper marketing to get enough traffic that with conversion rate can substantiate that, that type of capital. But no, statistically, 90% of campaigns are doing less than six figures a month. Uh, we're going to talk about 50% of campaigns never passing about 75K in their total Reg CF campaign and base it all on metrics that we find here on King's Crowd. So before we even begin talking about marketing and the type of return on ad spends, the type of return on marketing spends we're playing for, these metrics really have to be absorbed. And, and if they're not discussed, there's some type of disservice occurring. So whether it's a portal speaking to an issuer, a marketing agency speaking to an issuer, it's very, very pertinent that we do not overstate. We talk about exactly what's occurring in the market. If I only point out our success stories, if any of the groups I just mentioned only point out the success stories, it's setting false expectations. Yeah, you're hitting 5 million. You can raise 5 million as Reg CF. You want to do it in two months or six. Uh, we're going to talk about how many campaigns have actually done 5 million of the 6,100 that have gone down reg CF. So we're, we're going to map that out. And as you can see here, less than 1% of all reg CF issuers since 2021 ha have raised that 5 million. Um, can, we will have a, a slide that will break down those exact numbers. But David, what do you hear on a daily basis when you're speaking to different issuers, different founders, marketing professionals, even the VCs that are talking to us about their portfolio companies? How, how are they trying to use Reg CF uh, in what period of time and how are there you know, falsities along with that? You know, uh, one of the things that I get a lot is that I really don't know what to expect. Um, I'm not the person who's going to take a dream and tell them that it can't be done. I'm the person that actually says, hey, you know, this is fantastic. It sounds like a great opportunity. And it is. Usually I hear some great stories. I hear some great opportunities. The problem is, is that there's there's the delta between, you know, what I think it's worth, what, what it was another man's treasure type of thing. I'm not saying it's a garage sale, but what I'm saying is, is that sometimes issuers don't want to invest in some different, you know, odd uh, organization that's never done any business, that's still in its infancy stages, that's not really, has not really yet fulfilled, you know, what the sales department is, what the marketing department is, or anything like that. So usually investors would like to see specifically is some kind of commitments that have been going on for the last couple of three years. Um, but at the same token is we've seen some startups that actually have crushed it. But again, the delusions of grandeur where you think it's worth five million in the next six months, it's, you know, as you can see, 1% only hit that since 2021. So we try to be as upfront and, and, and as honest as we could possibly be. But at the same time, we don't want to crush dreams and in, in, in the future of a potential of a potential company just based on numbers. It can happen to anybody. But we just want our, our potential clients and those out there that are seeking to get into Reg CF or any other um, fiduciary area, we just want them to know that, that there's pitfalls involved. You got, they, the organization can't guarantee us 
you know, that they're going to project X amount of dollars in 2025, we can't guarantee that you're going to hit 5 million either. So it works both ways. David, I know you got a baseball background. It's like telling a pro ball player, you know, maybe they're a rookie. They, they, they made it past all of these different benchmarks that, that no one does. But it's like telling them you're going to hit 60 home runs this first or year. You're the, or you're the next Ken Griffey Jr. Come on. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. <laughs> got to get the feet wet. Got to see it actually developing. Then from there, the path forward becomes uh you know, based on actual analytics, not just based on assumptions, not just talking about how great a pitch is, but actually looking at the metrics. You know, we have our whole philosophy here uh, towards marketing, entrepreneurship growth as a whole summarized in three words, test, optimize, scale. You can see it on the screen here. I think point in the right direction. Uh, can point, can see it on the screen right here. We, we need to see the analytics. Everyone has assumptions going in. Uh, the top consultants, broker dealers, lawyers, CPAs in the space. Hey, this this issuer is really going to do well. And sometimes they're wrong. Uh, we try not to have any type of you know guess until the the data is actually there. Uh, and if we are trying to project, we look at things such as audience size and how much traffic uh, can be sent to the page from organic sources in the initial stages. Really, based on numbers, it's the only way to measure. You've probably heard that in our content before because it's so true, and you have to repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. Even on our weekly reporting calls with clients, whether we're talking about pixels and only being able to track about a third uh, of users on those, whether we're talking about other traffic sources and determining what's coming from where, we need the numbers to show us what's working and need to make sense of everything else that's occurring from those metrics. Uh, so a live raise needs to approximately, uh, it needs to produce approximately 50,000 visitors uh, per, per million dollars raised. And that's based on the Reg CF average of $1,000 investment. Uh, Kingstride actually has articles that state $500 to $1,000 per investment, but most of the campaigns we work on, it's $1,000 investment average on a Reg CF. Reg A plus, maybe you're looking at $2,500. A lot of numbers actually suggest low. More than that, maybe you're 500, maybe this 50,000 uh, you know, visits produces two and a half million dollars for you. And this is uh, built around a formula of a 2% conversion rate. Google says an average conversion rate is 2.35% across the internet, you know, everything from t shirts to, uh, you know, uh, entertainment subscriptions, everything bulked in there to 2.35%. So on an investment campaign, if you're getting 2%, that's solid. 1% is workable. Half a percent on some of our large campaigns with enough traffic can produce the right cost per acquisition. It can still produce $100, $200 cost per acquisition of each investor. And if you're getting $1,000 from that investor on average, it's a 5X, 10X return on ad spent. And we're hoping that investor shares with their friends, with their family. There's some other peer-to-peer -peer marketing occurring to bring in more organic investments. So you're not paying for every investment with advertising. But, but this is really what you need to anticipate. Uh, don't think, hey, we have these influencers who are going to post about us. They got millions of followers. We're good. Unless you think those millions of followers are physically going to produce 50,000 visitors, for each million dollars that you want to raise. If it's a $5 million campaign, do not plan on running less than 250,000 visitors to your page and raising $5 million. Could it happen? Sure, absolutely. Large investments. I, I could talk about some of the, the variables, uh, but, but you want to project conservatively and be pleasantly surprised if it's less. These are the fundamentals. And this is what you have to start prepping for because what's your page going to look like? Uh, what's your funnel going to look like for these 50,000 visitors? It, it, it needs to encapsulate what a sit down with your founder, with your IR, your investor relations team is going to consist of, uh, but for scale. And it's great. You could have video clips in there. You could point at all the logos of brands that have featured you, brands that use you, customer profiles, uh, you know, different types of partners. You want to flood your page with social proof to get the right optics. We're going to get into a few other things here. Uh, Danny, why is starting marketing early a page in this deck? Well, there's a saying, there's no crowd fund, uh, without a crowd. I don't know who mentioned that, 
but it is 100% relevant uh, in a few different fashions. Uh, a campaign that launched- And Danny, I got to stop you. We only see your eyes. I don't know what's going on with my settings. Um, it's, it's your uh, it's your camera. If you just move back a little bit, but uh, your your profile, which we see everywhere online at this point, is being cut off. So I just want to, yeah, there you go, there you go. Uh, all right, cool. Thank you for that. Um, new camera, so <laughs> trying to figure out the settings. But uh, yeah, so it, it falls into a few different categories. So let's say we launch with a raise and they have 250k raise versus 15k raise um that all comes down to pre-launch friends and family uh the audiences we target are going to speak uh, are looking at that race completely different in a different lens of eyes um it's a validator something's going on we've had campaigns launched at a million dollars out of private mode um it, it says a lot to that audience um where if it's below that, it can be considered the empty restaurant feeling in the industry is considered the uphill battle. Um, we inherit campaigns that are at 30K. It's, it's a lot harder to pull them out of that, that 100K. So having a, a, a good strategy in place, we're able to identify potential holes before the campaign goes live. It aligns our teams at higher levels. Um, we're in sync. If we just launch an ad campaign, we're going to spend a week. Our strategies are, are four weeks long. Um, and uh, we definitely want to focus on having, um, you know, being intentional at the gate. We don't build a, a building without a floor plan, right? Um, so having a, a good plan that we're aligned with, with deliverables, audiences, how we're going to, you know, hit that $1 million, $5 million cap, but all aligned together. And that's where reward crowdfunding fundamentals come in. There are differences between reward and equity crowdfunding, of course, but they are both crowdfunding. Equity crowdfunding was, was born on the same principles as reward crowdfunding in terms of the actual vehicle. Uh, we ran advertising with reward crowdfunding agencies back in 2015, 2016. I knew agencies would not take a campaign live meaning from pre-launch to actual live campaign, unless they had 10,000 or more email signups for the campaign. Some of them went further to get transactions from those audiences beforehand, small. That way they knew once we're live, we could count on these guys and they'd get a huge conversion rate of that audience. Really impressive marketing fundamentals. Uh, and you can read about some of those stats on, on uh, you know, platforms like LaunchBoom. They do amazing stuff, uh, have done some of the top campaigns. And that pre-launch best practice document really shows what the power of starting marketing early can mean for your campaign. You could do test the waters legally, can talk about and get reservations for your campaign, you know, non-binding, you, know, you follow all the compliance and rules around it. Uh, but if you're able to enter those first stages with a large amount of investors, your campaign statistically is more likely uh, it's as Dan mentioned, empty restaurant sensation. If you're saying you're disrupting the AI industry, disrupting the banking industry, and you have $20,000 raised, or if you have $200,000 raised, the first day, a million dollars raised, of five, the first week, it, it says something much differently. We could do the whole webinar uh, on just that topic uh, alone, literally. And what I'm about to show you on these next stats is mind boggling to say the least, it's the breakdown of how much these campaigns actually raise. And you'll see which ones were, were never really set up for success, uh, where if they came out of the gate and had the optics of half million dollars raised, a million dollars raised, going after five, they, they would have been on a much brighter path. So these are things that are better to take into consideration during the planning stage and even if it's a defeating thought of how am I going to get those investors? How am I going to get that capital there? That's why I'm using crowdfunding to be able to get new audiences in. Better to think about this now than have to deal with that during your live campaign. Um, th this is the breakdown. And, and David, I, I got you on the next page. I just want to fire through these stats. You know, I'm a big numbers guy. And I, I've, I've spent a lot of time with these stats over the past week. 
So of 6,165 campaigns as measured last Tuesday, July 18th, 2023, uh, only 5,285 ever produced a single dollar. Now there's about a hundred in that, uh, you know, 900, 800 or so that, that are self that, that are self publishing and did not report how much they raised, but really not more than a hundred. So there's some deal maker campaigns on there. Uh, there's some Rialto campaigns on there. There's some other campaigns that just did not report how much they raised. Uh, but but it's a small percentage that even constitute that 800. A lot of them are, you know, the top portals that you would see. Uh, so 5,285 raised a dollar or more. 3,082 raised about $75,000 or more. That's only 50%. If you raise $75,000 even on your fundraising campaign, you're in the top 50% of issuers. Now, 100K, we suggest being able to build a large enough audience to be able to produce 100K in the first day, the first week. Otherwise, it has, those, it has that negative presentation. Only 2,670 of the 6,165 issuers actually did that. 1,685 to 200K or more, uh, but that's it. Of 6,100, uh, the top 20% only did $304,000 uh, or more. 1,200 some odd issuers of 6,100 uh, about issuers. Uh, 949K for 400K plus, 799 did half million or more, and, and 616, did 647K or more. That's the top 10% of issuers. The numbers don't lie. They're, they're staring at us right here. If anyone is acting like a million dollars is a guarantee, it's just a matter of, of time. They're not taking into account that 90% of the groups that did a form C or, or you know, were able to launch a reg CF in one way, shape, or form. I know there's different entry points to it, but be using this regulation as reported by King's Crowd it's only the top 10%. Only 420 have ever hit a million dollars or more. Now, the stats get a little skewed from here because a few slides back we mentioned you weren't able to raise over 1.07 million before March 2021. So the stats passed here are all issuers that went live uh, between March 2021 and today. Uh, about 100 issuers. Um, gone live here in July, just to give you an idea, I think about 130, 140 went live last month. So there's a much higher volume that have gone live uh, per year since then, keep, into, uh, keep in mind, but 113 have hit 2 million since then. That, that's it. 100 of those uh, have the top 100, it's 2.19 million. Uh, 41 have hit 4 million or more, not a big difference at the 3 million number. And only 35, I told you we'd get to the stat, only 35 ever have hit the full 5 million. I believe that's seven this year in 2023, 20 last year in 2022, and eight in, in that's from March to December, uh, 30 months that we weren't able to do over 1.07 million. But, but also that year there was campaigns that were waiting for that date and, and they went past their 1.07 million on that date. So when I get asked, hey, is three months enough time to, to raise 5 million? Well, let me break down the stats for you. Uh, I could tell them about our campaigns. I could tell them about our Reg A plus campaigns. You know, 18 million, larger, you know, 5 million, 10 million. I, I could point at things we've done uh, outside of equity crowdfunding and fintech apps where we've produced billions in assets under management, or even just the fact that we've done hundreds of millions on our campaigns across our 350 plus equity crowdfunding campaigns we've done date. But, but I'd rather point at this because I know how the conversations evolve and I don't want to set any false expectations. So if you're able to come out of the gate with 100, 200, 500 or a million, uh, you're already beyond these other issuers. The, the, the investors are gonna gravitate towards the campaigns that are doing the best and, and you need to position accordingly. Otherwise, wh why would they invest in you when another group has thousands of investors? Remember, it's about $1,000 per investor. So a $4 million campaign probably has 4,000 investors. 
Um, we're going to do all different types of things, these stats and slides, because again, we, we want to get the info out there. We want to see a higher success rate industry-wide. I'm happy to share heart campaigns and percentages are, are much higher than this in terms of which ones succeed, which ones hit different higher levels. Uh, but, you know, we're, it's, it's why we put out this educational content. Uh, David, I've been talking a lot. How do you put together an initial marketing budget? Well, you know, there's a there's a number of different agencies out there that provide um, different opinions. <laughs> so we've been in the business now, and when you really think about the fintech world uh, over over 12 years, you know, seven to ten, seven to eight of that has been Reg CF. We've also done Reg D. We've also done Reg A plus. So that always changes the spectrum of how much do we put in to try to attract specific, you know, investors. We're talking here Reg CF that has both accredited and retail investors. So we're looking at somewhere about 10% of your raised total should be the marketing, I guess you can say the measurable area there uh, to put into marketing so you, we can attract that that investor. Now, we have these investors, but you're not just going to send something out there and say, hey, come on over and, and, and invest in this organization here. We have to hit that investor seven to 17 times. It's so it's not only just you know marketing, it's retargeting, it's remarketing and going after them multiple times because as you were talking about earlier, sometimes you know you can have the greatest product in the world, but sometimes the investors wait to the last minute. <laughs> so they wanna play the market, they wanna play the game. So we wanna make sure that that game is getting played on your, on your organization for that raise. So we look at about 10% of your raise total should be a marketing. Um, and be doing it a number of different fashions, whether it's advertising, whether it's outreach, a lot of content, webinars such as these, all of these things play a role because again, you're the CEO or you're the founder of this organization, your name needs to be a brand you know, in, in that aspect. And we wanna make sure that people know who you are and they can shake hands to you because again, those retail investors could be just mom and pops that are getting out of the stock market and putting it into something something different of a long-term goal. And they wanna make sure that they understand and really respect that person. So that's what webinars are for. That's what branding is about. That's what email is. That's what blogs are about. So we make sure we do the entire package and tie it up. And it's not just an ad going out into a Facebook atmosphere or meta atmosphere. So we want to make sure that we're doing it from a well-rounded and holistic way. 10% of what you're trying to raise can lean into it with the starting budget, do rolling closes, take the disbursements reinvest into marketing. Danny, is equity crowdfunding for everyone? Uh, the way I look at it is um, you need to have thick skin. Uh, these are more marathons and sprints. It's not always all up. There are times that there are slow times and we need to come together collectively and focus on what we can do. Uh, to change the targeting, change the filtering. Um, I find that uh, founders that are more proactive because that's the ones that they're investing at the end of the day, they're doing update videos with different partnerships. We're throwing in the retargeting audience. We've had one client that, uh, Adam Beam, that would do that every two weeks. Um, they had upwards of a 20X return at certain times and raise uh, 3 million on start engine. This was their, their first, their second raise with us. They did 2.5 on the first raise. So we give him all the credit. Um, he, uh, mastered the code by putting a face behind it. He also had a spokesperson. He had a lot of energy. Um, so not only the crowdfunding side of it, I mean, the pitch video is not for everybody. Um, if you have low energy, you're not resonating with the, with the audience. Uh, we want to be able to show um, activity, excitement. We want to be able to rally people. Um, and if we're not able to do that, it can have a, a, net, a, net, a negative connotation to the offering. People just tend to question it more. So we want to make sure that um, we're focused on all funds around business momentum, raise momentum. But yeah, to answer your question, Raising is not for everybody through the crowd. They're not going to be sitting next to you at a, a coffee shop talking about the terms. 
uh, all they have to go off about the race is what's on your offering page, what's on your social media, um, and the ads are what what brings it uh, in your website. Um, that's all they have to go off in the content you're putting out. So, you know, as Danny's mentioning, it's a full time gig. You got to know what you're getting into. We see the most successful raises from the most active founders. So, whether it's Charles from Adam Beam, Andy uh, and Andrew Yakub from from Rayton, Jeremy at Rad AI, uh, Brad at Avidane, uh, Troy at Earth Green. First name is how the investors know these companies. It, it, it's that face pulling the brand, and you know can't emphasize enough that those founders I all just I mentioned, you know, one of them became a Forbes 30 under 30 for energy by by being overactive as a founder. Uh, another engaged all of their local investor groups and was bringing in, you know, 50K, 100K throughout the campaign. And every time that occurred, there was a spike in other investments from people who were watching the campaign. Uh, some of their backgrounds beyond impressive, and they're still presenting on a daily basis everywhere. Not, not just saying, you know, I've done this stuff. People figured out, they'll invest in us because of the team, as much as none of the teams being featured somewhere differently every week. And I, I think that's true with startups in general. Let, let us not forget, you know, as we're talking about stats of equity crowdfunding, you may be thinking, why would anybody do this? I'm certainly not doing it. Why, why would I run equity crowdfunding as a vehicle when most people don't raise over 647K? 10% <laughs> are the only audiences that get past that. 90% of startups fail in the first year. Those that survive, 90% of those fail the second year. I mean, we see it in equity crowdfunding, companies that actually did well and then later go under. Uh, and I could tell you different trends and what they do in terms of marketing, in terms of do's and don'ts. Uh, but, but let us not forget, most businesses never do a million dollars in sales. Uh, you know, you want to do whatever you can to stand out to the crowd. Notice we haven't talked about the colors of your page, your pitch video. We haven't talked about any of that yet because the investors don't care until they know you're the real deal. They didn't care about the campaigns that had under 74K raised. Uh, they, they cared about the ones that did 5 million. They cared about the ones over a million. And you could see that on the Kings Crowd metrics on their weekly reports in terms of which ones are moving the most. You need that crowd. This is a crowd fund. It's not just a way to put something online and raise capital. So we see this on our successful campaigns. Uh, we want to make sure it's out there for, for everybody else. Uh, David, what are the best approaches towards minimum investment? I know this is actually what we wanted to build a webinar around, is, is this slide alone and how it pertains to advertising and average metrics it costs to acquire an investor. Uh, what minimum investments do we recommend? What minimum investments do you see? And Danny, any notes to add to that too? Yeah, you know, we see a lot of $100 as, as a minimum, which is basically what the portal's actually saying. Okay, why don't you start at 100 bucks, and then, you know, we can you can go from there. But, you know, again, if you're trying to raise a half a million dollars, that's a lot of 100 bucks. Uh, what are the odds of getting, you know, hundreds and hundreds of investors um, ponying up $100? Not, not that good, as you can see by the stats. We recommend, and Danny is a big fan of this because again, you can't restart your raise, which is a, a great moniker that he has. I, I, we're a fan of 300 to 500. And there's a couple of reasons why, and I'm sure we, we get into those, but the, the real two that jump out right now are one, the investor takes it a little bit more serious, right? You're asking for a little bit more because you, you are worth that much. And the other reason is because it's gonna be quicker to get to your raise total. Um, so those are the two areas that I kind of focus on when I talk to uh, a new person in the reg CF world. And for that matter, even if they've been stagnant, they started, you know, three months ago, they've hit this plateau over the last few months, and they're asking us, what should I do next? And I'm saying, you know, maybe start raising your, your, uh, your minimum, um, and then also, you know, invest in marketing. <laughs> so they kind of go hand in hand. And some portals will allow you to change your minimum filing. There's other aspects involved. Others don't want to touch it. So we're just the marketers. You really have to work with 
other groups that focus on this area specifically. That being said, when we're asked, it's $300 to $500. Uh, $100 is great for the portal, as David's mentioning. And I've seen it work beautifully uh, on different campaigns. I think Jet Token had $100 minimum. Uh, some of ours, but I, I just, I'm very happy if we hit $150 cost per acquisition of an investor. Uh, $100 cost per acquisition investor is, is fantastic. It's outstanding uh, for this type of conversion. Sure, we have campaigns where it's $20 and $50, but hundred dollars that that's it sets you up for a very strong return um me you know you're not going to see it in terms of return on ad spend if your mom's 100 because the majority of investors will gravitate towards the minimum maybe put in more layer where, where you have to look at your audience and ask if it's 300 dollars, are they going to be turned away and leave are they if it's 500 dollars, will they still do it how many are we losing at 500 how much more are we gaining at 500 your average investment at 500 is going to be substantially higher um, Danny, want to add to that? Yeah, uh, I mean, it, it's all a numbers game. So what we see on average is, let's say it's uh, $500. We'll see $1,275 to fourteen dollars as average investment rate, but investment amount of the first time investments. There's also repeat investments to factor in. We'll be still retargeting those audiences. Uh, if it's a Reg A plus, we found clients that uh, use IR plays and one uh, actually converted a 250K, uh, or sorry, a $420 minimum investment to 250K by reaching out to them on LinkedIn. So the, the ability is there. But uh, yeah, to summarize what you guys are That's saying. It's on a Reg A plus, by the way. Correct. correct. Um, some of the, the numbers, I mean, you're, yeah, you're going to need more investors at the lower minimums. and we get pushback from clients. Um, oh, well, I, you know, friends and family already participated. I mean, these are 200, these are two pairs of shoes. Um, it, it's not going to break most retail investors. Um, and your friends and family are the ones that shine on this, having that strong launch um, where we're going to be targeting audiences that don't know about you. So having that initial traction which all comes down to the average investment amount because uh, you'll be at a higher level with the higher minimums. Um, and sometimes that doesn't affect friends and family, but it'll affect the cold audience. Um, and at the end of the day, clients won't stay with us if we're not seeing a return on ad spend. Um, so this is a direct correlation to our growth, their growth. Um, and the hundred dollar minimums are much tougher. I think there's been two since we've worked, uh, in these campaigns that did hit those levels. Um, there could be more that I'm not aware of that, uh, I wasn't directly a part of, um, but it's usually an uphill battle with those minimum investments because we're spending more to acquire the investor. It's usually 150 to 250 to acquire an investor. We're spending, let's say even a hundred dollars to get a hundred dollar investment. Clients aren't going to be happy. We're not going to be happy um, just because we're, we're hitting a, a flat end and uh, need to find ways to get that higher. And some portals make it a bit more difficult uh, to, um, they have to have the previous investors recommit at the higher amounts. So they'll have a drop rate. So this is all stuff that should be mapped out before the raise goes live, uh, ideally. And some portals are more loose with raising your minimum. Yeah, and there's different schools of thought around it. From the advertising perspective, this is what we've seen work the most. Test optimized scale, we've tested it, is what we've seen. Uh, it's not based on ideology as much as cold, hard stats. We already saw the stats of what works in the industry. Uh, you know, some portals will say, we have an 80% success rate. And then you look and there's an offering minimum and it's hitting the offering minimum, not hitting the full 5 million, because we already know it's a small percentage that hit that. So, you know, ask the right questions, look at the right setup, whether, you know, it's you're in planning for a campaign, whether you have a live campaign, whether you're planning for your next one. Uh, these are all things to, to consider. Um, I also just try to think about it from the investor perspective. As a marketer, I have to uh, put myself in their shoes. You know, who is the target audience? Uh, <laughs> I research these campaigns. My social feed is littered with investment opportunities. Everyone who's selling investments online targets me. 
uh, and I, I put together a photo library about it. <clears throat> you, ever, you ever need ad examples, reach out to us. We got them both from what we run and, and others. <clears throat> Meanwhile, uh, why am I going to invest into a campaign for $100? What, what am I expecting them to grow 500% over seven to 10 years? And, you know, in seven to 10 years, I have $500. I don't even know if that'll beat inflation at this point. Where, you know, if someone's putting in 500, 1,000, are they going to retire off that upside, off a liquidity event? No, but, but it's definitely more meaningful. It's definitely more substantial. Meanwhile, if I don't trust a company yet, or if I'm unsure whether my early stage investment is going to amount to anything, that minimum seems less committing, you know, more attractive in many ways. So sure, I'll $100, let me throw it in. Uh, Cause it's just staring there at me where if it's 300, if it's 500, maybe I have to think about it again, but I'm, I'm able to do it. We're able to target off of, you know, income net worth uh, trends. Um, even further, I mean, we're able to target historical equity crowdfunding investors. We know who we're reaching, uh, but but you know, really think about it from that regard. It's not a matter of, hey, we want to make it as easy as possible for people to invest. Let's do a, a $10 minimum, you know, $50 minimum. We hear this uh, because who are you really turning away at these larger amounts? Dan and, uh, uh, I think you froze, but uh, I, the only reason I would recommend the hundred dollar minimums is if they're not concerned with the return on ad spend. They're trying to get as many investors with the least resistance as possible, and then turn those investors into users. Uh, we have ran into those um, where you're getting you know six, seven thousand investors, least resistance possible. That is another angle of looking at it, but most clients we work with have to have that return to continue. I'll just end it with that. David, you want to pick things up here? Yeah, you know, we, we deal with this on a daily basis and uh, going back to some of those stats that you showed with regards to 50% don't even get to 74K. A lot of times we get clients that come in to, to, to ask about our our, op our options uh, with regards to marketing and they're stuck in the last like two months at 60K. So how do we take them from trusting, you know, not trusting us to trusting us to get them to the next level? And, and you know, this just sets up uh, what we do in a, in a more a finer point of landing pages, background, investors that we have, that we have, you know, that we cater to, how we go about them from a targeting and a retargeting aspect what we do from a brand perspective of getting your, your yourself out there from a CEO or a founder perspective. These are things that the portal doesn't don't really provide you. They have so many other clients that they're working with that they don't have uh, enough time to spend with you. We give you that one-on-one -on -one uh, very secure time with from from an account manager all the way down to the person that actually does the ad manager. Um, so we provide you with a whole team that works with you getting your story out making sure the messaging is correct and holistically map marketing across to our investors and to others and as we try to drive up even more of an investor collection so you can actually market to them down the road so these are just things that the, that we do that are that's different than what others may, may be doing from you that you got to the stagnant point of x dollars and you can't get over the hump absolutely correct and, and you know, want to throw in that asterisk. Some of the portals absolutely do this, but you want to go above and beyond your your first draft of your offering page. Correct. And there you go. What I mean by that is incorporate third parties, bring in consultants, bring in actual investors, and ask them if they will if they would invest on this. And you got to do it compliantly at the right stages. But, but as a marketer, I want the end audience to say, yep, or what does this mean? Or why that? Or no, you're asking for a $50 million valuation. Meanwhile, there's all types of errors on your offering page. Correct, uh, correct. You know, or, or, you know, at any point in the campaign, if it's not converting, conversion rate is the single most important metric in the algorithm. 
you know, we're going from impressions to clicks to conversions, how many times your content and ads have been seen, how much traffic is driving your offering page, how many investments are occurring, that conversion rate and associated uh, numbers, uh, that is the most important part. So don't sell yourself short. Don't just take things live. Let's see what happens. Uh, it's not a matter of I'm up and live. I've done my paperwork. Now give me $5 million as much as is your offering page giving your company justice. Is it better than other pages on the portal? Is it better than other offerings in the industry? And you can see them all on King's crowd. Is it better than what your competitors are doing? Is the offering page better than their actual site? If not, you may be actually hurting the brand more than helping it in some condition, in, in some situations. So get more opinions, figure out more ways to create social proof, third party validation, you know, make sure your page has a feeling of trust. Danny, why do we talk about social proof so much? I mean, it, it's, it's the, the biggest factor to show momentum. Um, social proof can fall in a few different categories. Partnerships, uh, we have clients that sent us large partnership update videos, 30 seconds that we throw in the retargeting audience uh, of them speaking about it goes a long way. Um, having different partnerships where they're talking about the offering to their audience, um, testimonials, but I'm more focused on investor testimonials versus consumers or um, any other type of parties. Like what we want to focus solely on the investment opportunity. We're not selling the product. We're not selling the service. We're selling that security. So all the testimonials should be relevant to that. Um, and we can, let's say a publisher picks us up. We can quote that publisher in an ad could target the audience that follows that publisher with segmented targeting in their internal audiences. Instead of just a shout out from that publisher, we could have that return last six months, 12 months. Um, same with influencers, uh, brand ambassadors. You know, there's ways to leverage it with ads. I, I commonly hear like, oh, we're just going to work with this publisher where if it did great, imagine how much better it would have been if we tagged all those people that came into it and then we're running ads to them of that creative, of that person talking about it, the lifespan could be significantly stronger. And then in regards to uh, return on ad spend, uh, dramatically increase. So there's ways to leverage that with advertising. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. It's all funnel. Exactly. And, you know, we've said it many times in our content, people don't believe what they see online. They need that third party validation to then tap into that same narrative for themselves. Um, we've talked about some of the next topics here. And as we wrap up the next six or so pages in the next 10 minutes here, I want to get everybody out on time. Uh, David, we talked about this closed loop a little bit. Why, why is it so important? Well, I think that when you are reaching out to your family and your friends and things of this nature, they, they have a trust in what you have. They have the same dream that you do. Uh, I, I would think that they do. They want you to be successful. So going out and actually asking them for that initial startup uh, if you will, that capital to get you to the next level. I, they have the same dream as you. So why not incorporate that amongst the family? I'm sure sometimes it's never, you know, it's not worked out as well, but you're still family. So getting their trust provides you with a mindset that says, now I could take this based on my family, my friends and, and their beliefs to the next level to where I think the investors will understand my passion, my product, my next, you know, two years of projections, you know, things of that nature where you're, again, going back to the brand of uh, get, get being more social, as Danny was putting it earlier, get yourself out there and, and, and you know, bring it, bring yourself to 
a place to where you're talking to people instead of asking for people to come to your place. So it's a much better situation. And this, this is just the first step in getting to that next level. Okay, Danny, you want to talk about getting creative on this next page here? Let's look at the top pages incorporated, at least what top level but your page. So this is all focused on the, the offering page, correct? Um, so the, the, the top pages I find, um, you want to get solid pitch video. Uh, make sure the video is not selling the product. We can go to 30 offerings right now. It touches on the product, maybe the investment opportunity a minute 30 in, people drop off. Picture an eight point pitch deck is what the way I, I phrase it. We we're talking about the mission statement, the team, third party validation. We want to be able to focus on the investment opportunity and what makes it strong uh, and speak specifically uh, to those points. Um, and, and, and a minute 30 long video, two minutes tops. So we're gonna, we're gonna repurpose those videos for ads, 30 seconds long. So, um, and you wanna have energy. You wanna build excitement. Um, I find some pounders maybe just aren't best fit for the video so they can get spokesperson, um, but you wanna build that excitement, that credibility. And that's who at the end of the day is they're investing in the team versus any product service. Um, so they're the ones steering the wheel in the company. Uh, we want to have logos, as seen on, very visual. Most of text is heavy in the start. Uh, our most uh, traffic is mobile in the beginning. So they're going to want to see infographics, videos. They're not going to run around, read small text. Um, so we want to make sure we're capturing that, that moment for them to want to be able to come back to the offerings, then convert. Uh, and that first experience is everything. Yeah. And as Danny's saying there, the launch is make or break. So, you know, a strong launch is essential to creating momentum and investor interest. Yes, test optimize and scale, but you're using a, a finite timeline that the most precious resource here is not actually your marketing budget. It's your timeline. If you're on platforms like Republic, you have three months and you really need to be firing on all cylinders that first month to set up a strong enough foundation to be able to stand out your second month and then do a closing in month three and have closing messaging and create a strong enough fear of missing out in that period of time. Make sure you're throwing enough at it You know, during the launch. We've talked about 10% of your total goal being anticipated for marketing we, we talk about it easily you don't have to have that committed at the beginning you, you could slow down stop you could do a rolling close take out more capital but set yourself up to spend that on marketing set yourself up to, to buy traffic to get the right traffic sources otherwise month two month three are going to look grim that first week uh, we can't stress enough is that important if you're starting at 13K versus 150, you're going to see a different conversion rate, dramatically different. You may not see any conversions at 13K. The more you raise the first 40 hour, 48 hours to the week, the more momentum and traction you feature. Uh, you, can, you can feature, the portals will feature you if you hit different, uh, you know, top chart um, levels uh, on their platform. And you really need this to be the show. On reward crowdfunding, 70 to 80% chance of failure if you didn't hit a third of your goal in the first 24 hours. Given that's a 30-day campaign, given you know 25K is the average raise there, a lot of groups are going after 100K. So a third of that's much easier to do. Uh, but same social dynamics at play, leverage that first week. And as we've talked about, the most active uh, founders have the most successful campaigns, draw in the crowd. Uh, cultivating connection with your audience. Only using one area of marketing is not enough. You need to be testing as many as you can, speak with as many people as you can, not uh, using it as an afterthought. David, is it good to be shy as a founder? Is it good to just have your agency do all of the work? No, it is not good to do that. Um, you're the brand. 
it's your, it, this is your company. You need to be out there. You, I mean, a lot of, we've come across this quite a bit where how much work do I really have to put into this? And we work alongside you. We're just an extension of your organization. We're the marketing arm. And not only do we ask you for all the approvals before we even put it out into the ecosystem, but we want you to be out there. You, I don't care if you, we have we have we have CEOs and founders that actually do uh, TikTok videos while they're walking on a bridge, or they're they're just taking a walk in the park, and they're so excited about the last deal they just got based on the investor traffic that they've had. And it's just it's it's you hit, it's your baby. So play the role that you're supposed to as the owner, the founder, the CEO. Make sure that you they know people know that you're invested in it as well. So these are all good points to make with regards to, you know, do I have to play a role? Do I have to talk to people? Absolutely. <laughs> that's that's why we're here for you. You can do blogs. We can do webinars, things of this nature. So that's a great way of getting out and actually inviting the, the actual investor into your home. And this webinar is all about optics. So what does it say if you get to an offering page and you don't see the founder? or they haven't done anything in terms of content. They don't have active social feeds. They don't put out a blog. They're not featured anywhere at any conference on their own articles. I don't have a webinar with industry leaders featured in there. You know, what does it say? It's a shy founder. You know, even if it's someone trying to live in the shadows, have someone on the spotlight, have a personality, you know, have that with your brand. Danny, what's the bottom line? Yeah, so just a few things I wanted to add there. So sometimes we get, oh, we're B2B. We don't need an audience. Well, this is crowdfunding. So maybe not for B2B business, but we need to build out a crowd. We need to build out digital awareness. It's only going to help your people that are doing due diligence with the ads. Um, and another part about the, the raise page, those top three reasons to invest should all have numbers. They should be very strong. Um, where if it's something about historical facts or something that's not as relevant, you're not gonna convert as well. Um, it is one of the top things you're gonna see. But uh, yeah, these are more marathons and sprints. You do have to have thick skin. There, there are slow weeks, there's good weeks, there's stuff that affect the market that's out of our control. We're going to be coming up with recommendations ongoing. We say the best marketers are problem solvers. We're very proactive. Have had clients come back to us do six, seven different races. Um, and, you know, we're vertical diagnostic as well as far as the portals go. But, yeah, you want to start out with a strategy. You want to build out a plan, build out awareness. I played sports my whole life. You don't want any what ifs at the end of the day. Um, you know, after the raise, if we had done this different, or if we went all in together as an extension of the team, founders are doing everything they can on top of it. Um, it, it it's a good dynamic and we're, you know, aligned throughout the whole campaign and know what we need to do and win. And constantly find ways to improve. What works for a campaign one month, one week may not work for the next. When we're working on these top raises, we constantly have to reinvent what we're doing. Uh, we constantly have to find ways to scale. And, you know, wh whether you're in planning, whether you're plateaued, whether you're scaling, you need to be finding ways to improve and take it to the next level and set up your, your roadmap to be able to hit your milestones quick enough. If you're not driving enough of that traffic in the early stages, Good luck. You, you really need a miracle of organic events to occur. If you're intentionally driving enough traffic to be able to hit it, if you have a strong enough conversion rate and optimizing your funnel to be able to produce that, you're going to be in a much better place. Uh, David, any final thoughts you want to leave the audience with as we say thank you here? You know, uh, <clears throat> yes. You know, th this uh, basically the last few slides has been for someone who's just starting to do a, a reg cf we help those who come in last 30 days of their raise the last two three months of their raise and again we can't restart your raise but we can inter inject 
new investor opportunities to you while you're trying to hit that raise towards the end of that raise goal. So it's not that we, we have to start with us and, and, and finish with us. We can take you on if there, things aren't moving in the right direction that you're currently doing now, we can help with that. We're not obviously guaranteeing you that it's all gonna be a bed of roses, but we're not going to stop until we actually do the right thing for you and put you in the right position to be successful. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, that is the bottom line from us. I wanna thank everybody for tuning in to our webinar. Have another one coming at you next month. Keep following our emails. Keep commenting on our socials. And we will be getting more information like this out to you. Don't forget to check out our podcast every week. It's a different external guest, not just us. Uh, but the internal ones are instructional. We like featuring what's actually working on our campaigns here today. You heard it directly from David, directly from Danny, who manages these campaigns on a daily basis. Thanks again. We'll, we'll see you next time.